Hi everyone. Okay, it's now the end of September and it's going to be October in a few days time and I've got to make a decision. These Rondo grates behind me have plateaued off in their sugar content. That's not climbing any more than it was a few uh, weeks ago. But it's hovering around about sort of 18%, which is too low for red grapes to be honest. But these vines are only about two years old. It's too soon really to take any kind of commercial crop off them. But I thought I was hoping that it was going to be a bit of an experiment this year uh, because we had so many of these, um, these grapes behind Behind me that I thought well it'd be a bit of a waste if we don't do something with them. I was being a bit optimistic to be honest if I was being truthful about it all in that uh, we haven't got the, um, the foliage or the leaf wall uh, behind me to power in that sugar content later on in the season and so it's with no surprise that uh, the sugar is not really sort of rising anymore and if I leave them much longer these grapes are going to start rotting on the vine and that would be a total waste because we won't get anything out of them. So this weekend I've got a little bit of a weather window before the next rain clouds and storms uh, roll in and so this weekend I'm going to start picking them, I'm going to de-stem them and take you through that process that we do and if I need to add a little bit of dextrose or sugar just to raise that sugar content a little bit so that we, uh, we get something decent by the end of it then that will be it. But it's a little bit of an experiment for me this year on trying to make some red wine so we'll have to just make uh, good what we've got. Okay I'll just run you along the line here you can see the absence of any great tall leaf wall up here and uh, that's because they're, they're young vines essentially and it means that we're not going to get any more sugar being put into these grapes that we've got established here. I'll just compare this with the Bacchus variety that we've got which is now five years old. Okay here we have the Bacchus ones with the uh, fruit down hanging below and we've got uh, you know this is probably about seven feet high this hedge here and it's much much better and it's going to just be powering a lot more sugar into these, um, these grapes that are hanging below. It's a later variety the Bacchus so we're probably about two or three weeks behind the Rondo ones. Incidentally these are the Orion grapes, uh, they're doing very nicely as well. Um, these are again the same age as the Rondo grapes, uh, they're doing quite nicely, a little bit lower sugar content, these are probably only about 12% at the moment and again they don't have a great leaf wall uh, because of their age and so I'm not expecting great things from these ones either. So I've got to go and find some buckets, some um, snippers and things like that and I've also got to get my uh, destemmer machine out of the uh, workshop just, just to see if we can fire that up. Okay so we're going to start with the rows that have been covered by the netting here because these are actually quite bountiful these uh, vines so we're going to uh, start with these and, um, and see how we get on and uh, we're going to time it actually just to sort of see how many grapes we can pick just the two of us in a sort of set amount of time. Uh, it's going to be interesting really because it will give us a guide as to how much uh, we can pick. Now as a general rule in the old days as it were, uh, well no not old days actually, <laughs> current days where people still hand pick, um, the guide is that one person should be able to pick one acre in one day. Uh, there's not a cat in hell's chance of us actually being able to do that because um, we're not sort of trained professionals at this at all. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how quickly we can do it. Well, we have to start somewhere. So, um, you know, when we harvest, you start with the first bunch and carry on. Um, I've got my clippers, but I'm also going to try some of these little finger uh, pincers here as well. These are, are quite clever little things, really. I've never used them before, but if I just open these up, what you're meant to do um, being a bit careful because they're incredibly sharp, is that you put the spring over your finger like so and there's another little spring on that side that keeps the, the jaws open and you literally just snip away to your heart's content and uh, doing that action is meant to be a little bit easier than using, the, uh, using these as it were but we'll see how it goes. Um, you never know, it might be uh, something to consider uh, or it might be something not but uh, we'll see how we get on and uh, I'll give you a report back in a second. Okay we've been picking grapes for about two hours now and we've probably um, got most of the grapes that we want to uh, get off. Uh, I'm really pleased that we started picking them when we did because I think if I did leave it any longer um, there is uh, evidence that um, they are going to start to rot quite quickly. So I'm glad we did it, it's a bit too early ideally because the sugar's not there but any longer I think to be honest would be um, uh, wasting our time. So anyway, Sonia's um, been using the little finger um, snippers which are there and I'm just going to show you exactly what they look like when cutting the grapes. 
Okay, these snippers work really well on most um, stalks, but when you come across a really thick one like this, uh, someone who's going to give it a go cutting through that, it might be okay, but it is a little bit more of a struggle where the normal clippers would be much better. But for most of the time, it's quite quick and easy. Um, little ones like that, for example, are really easy. Okay, so we've picked our grapes. The next stage is to get all those stems off the grapes. So we're just left with basically grape juice skins and pips. So for that uh, reason, we're going to be using this grape destemmer that I've got behind me. Now, some of you may have watched my previous videos on when I made a bit of an improvement. I'm hoping it was an improvement anyway to this grape destemmer. It did have one particular fault where the internal cog was a little bit too flexible. So the chain uh, kept coming off it uh, last year anyway. So I'm hoping this year I've resolved that problem. But um, some of you wanted to know how this grape destemmer works in a little bit more detail, so I'll just very quickly run through that now. Um, so hopefully it will give you an idea as to exactly what it's doing. It's quite a clever little machine really. So I've run a few grapes through it already, but essentially it's an auger or a hopper to start with in here. Um, you chuck all the grapes in, the auger pushes all the grapes through these two uh, counter revolving uh, wheels. So all the grapes then pass through the very narrow gap where my finger is here and it goes through to the next stage. Now underneath here we have got a series of rather large holes like that and inside there's a paddle and I'm not quite sure if you can see the paddle wheels very well but essentially there's a, a long sort of spindle, long axle that runs the whole length of this under here and it's got some um, little arms on it that essentially push the grape skins and um, juice through the holes and the, the, the long bits, the sort of, um, I don't know if I could just pull one through, these are basically what's left, which are just the stalks, and they get shoved in that direction. So they get ejected out of this hole here and onto the floor, or into a bin rather, in an ideal world. So. Um, that's what we get left. Now, it's probably easier to show you when it's actually up and working. So what we'll do is we'll chuck a whole load of grapes through and uh, you can actually see it um, working. It, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. OK, let's put loads of grapes in the hopper this time. Now, this is where it fell down last year. When I put loads of uh, grapes in here, it struggled a bit, to be honest. And so, um, yeah, I'm hoping with that uh, correction or mod that I made on this, this is going to cope really well. So we're going to absolutely load this hopper up full and just see how it copes. Here goes. Well, that didn't take very long. Okay, so that only took, whew, I don't know, probably about five minutes. Didn't take very long at all, to be honest. Five minutes to process all of those grapes. And essentially what we've done is we've just separated the fruit from all the stem. So this is all the stems and uh, bits and pieces. It's done a pretty good job, a very efficient job at getting rid of all the grapes from them and just leaving behind all the stalks and things like that. And what we're left with is a bucket full of juice along with the pips and the skins. Okay, so here we go. We've got a bin full of grape juice. Now, you'll find that there's one or two, you know, little bits of stalk. Here we go. Here's a couple of little bits of stalk that made it through those big holes underneath the machine. You can pick those out manually if you want, but I'm not too concerned um, about that, to be honest. Essentially, we've now just got grape juice, uh, which is ready for fermentation. Now, before we do anything at all, we've got to take an initial reading of how much sugar we've got in our wine or grape must here. So we can either do that by using our trusty refractometer, which will give us a Brix reading, um, or you can also do it using a hydrometer, things like this. You've probably seen uh, something like this before, where you put it into a, um, a, a 
an amount of grape must in it, you just read off the relative density of it. It will also give you an expected level of alcohol once it's uh, you know fully uh, fermented. Um, I also need to add some pectic enzyme and I've got loads of facts and figures which I'll give you in a second as to how much you need to add if any of these things uh, before we start the fermentation process. It's coming out on the refractometer at about 19%, 19 bricks. And on the, if I just take that out of the juice, on the hydrometer, I've got a reading of 1.08, which according to this should give me, if I read the scale correctly, about 12%. 13%, 12.5% alcohol. Now this is a lot more accurate than the refractometer. Well, the refractometer will give you a good indication of the sugar level. This will give you a superb indication of how much alcohol you should be able to make from the must. So I don't think I really need to add any sugar, to be honest. So if I don't need to add any sugar, I won't. Uh, so on to the next stage, which is measuring out some pectolase. You can buy uh, pectolase either in little format like this from Young's. They do that in the UK. I'm sure there's other places around the world. And essentially it breaks down pectins. Now pectins um, have a sort of associated haze to wine. So it prevents the sort of pectic haze that you get. Um, it also, by adding this enzyme, it also is meant to help the extraction of the colour and the flavours from the skins and things like that into the grape juice. And it also is meant to increase the yield when it comes to pressing. So it's quite a useful enzyme to add and it doesn't um, do anything to the flavor as such you know the actual product itself doesn't do anything to the flavor it just aids um, the production of all those nice flavors and things like that so we're going to be adding that in terms of how much you add it says on here dissolve half a cup in lukewarm water and add to the must uh, one level teaspoon per gallon now, in this case, the gallon refers to a UK gallon, which is 4.5 litres. Um, American gallons, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, are 3.8 litres. So um, you might just have to do a quick conversion. But I dare say that if you're buying pectolase in America, it will give you an idea as to how much to add. So uh, I'm going to go by go by that. The other thing we need to add is that potassium metabisulfate, just to kill all those bugs and uh, you know things that we don't want in there. Now, if you go on the internet, you'll find all sorts of different figures uh, that people are suggesting as to how much you need to add to your um you know your grape juice it doesn't help actually that um, in different parts of the world people are using different scales so in the UK we tend to go by grams per liter in America um, tend to go by uh, teaspoons per gallon now a gallon in America is 3.8 liters um, in the UK a gallon is 4.5 liters roughly so uh, you've got to do a lot of conversion when you look at uh, different things on the internet so I've got I've made my notes here and also depends on how strong you want your sulfite to be. Now a very strong um, sulfite uh, mix or concentration would be around about 75 parts per million. That would be considered a strong um, mix and I don't really want it that strong because I don't want it to interfere with the wine yeast that I'm adding. I want it to kill all the wild yeast and bacteria and molds and things that I've got in there at the moment but I don't want it to really hold back the uh, the wine yeast that I'm adding. So 75 parts per million is I think a little bit too strong to be honest so I'm going to roughly halve that to about 40 parts per million and I think that's probably by my uh, reading uh, should be okay. Now that works out to be now a have to forgive me here I'm going to work in um, grams per litre um, if you're in different parts of the world you might want to convert that into whatever scale you want into gallons or whatever but um, we're going to be roughly working out to be about seven grams um, per 50 litres that's roughly how much um, must I've got here um, so sorry seven grams per hundred litres so I've got about 50 litres I'm going to halve that to about three and a half grams of sodium metabisulfate that should give me round about 40 parts per million. Now if you look on as I say different uh, sites you'll find that uh, people are recommending um, a sixteenth of a teaspoon per gallon uh, that's absolutely fine as well. I think that works out to be roughly the same. Um, I think uh, doing my conversion that works out to be 9.2 grams per 100 litres. So that would be about 4.5 grams per 
50 litres, which is what I've got. So anything between three and a half, four and a half grams per 50 litres, I think I should be absolutely fine. I could just sort of say four grams, that should be fine. So that's how much sodium metabisulfite I'm going to be adding. I'm going to give that a, a good stir around and then we will see if we can get some uh, yeast activated and we'll, um, we'll put that in as well. So I've just added the pectolase and the sodium metabisulfate, no, not sodium, potassium metabisulfate. Uh, I'm going to give it a really good stir now and uh, just to give it a good old mix, just to uh, see if we can get every part of this great must in contact with those um, two ingredients. And then the final stage um, before we sort of put it to bed is to add the yeast. Now, whilst I'm just giving it a good stir, if you've got um, any comments you want to put in as to uh, what you do to make red wine, um, then definitely put it in the comments. I hold my hands up and say that I am absolutely no expert when it comes to this. This is the very, very first time that I'm making or attempting to make um, red wine. I've never made red wine before, made white wine. Uh, quite a few times and that's um, probably uh, probably a little bit easier to be honest but um, red wine no I'm totally new so um, I'm gonna make a few mistakes along the way I, I fully appreciate that um, hopefully uh, we'll get something drinkable out of it at the end but you may have lots of um, other tips and suggestions that you uh, want to impart and that's what this channel is all about really uh, so definitely put it in the uh, the comments I mean it's some people spend a whole lifetime um, making wine and, and doing this type of thing and I am totally uh, new to it so um, it's probably the blind leading the blind here <laughs> a little bit I appreciate that but uh, don't be too harsh on me uh, it's uh, you know I'm learning along the way and uh, hopefully uh, you can uh, follow my progress and uh, if I'm doing something uh, obviously wrong then uh, I'd like to know about it as well so yeah that's cool right I've given this a good stir so I'm just going to um, get some yeast see if we can wake that uh, up and uh, add that to uh, this solution and see how it goes what we should find uh, after I've added the yeast is um, the grape skin should sort of uh, come to the surface a bit more. That's when we basically want to punch it down, punch the skins down into the juice. Um, they say about twice a day, so um, you know I have to remember to to do that and uh, keep testing it um, to see um, what alcohol uh, level content we we get. And then once we get to the um, the end time, uh, once that hydrometer says that uh, there's no more sugar to convert into alcohol that's when we'll get the hydropress out and start pressing it uh, because it will have converted all the sugar to alcohol and then the next stage is the malolactic um, uh, secondary fermentation to convert all those malic acids into the more creamy tasting uh, lactic acid so there's more to do okay so next to add the yeast I'm going to basically be just using a general purpose red wine yeast from Young's Young's is a very popular uh, wine consumables um, business here in the UK I dare say they've probably got places uh, all around the world and uh, if you are based outside the UK there'll be plenty of plenty of different um, wine consumable places that you can uh, go to to get your yeast and things I have used the Lalvin um, type of yeast which is very popular uh, but I have found that quite difficult to get started so with this um, Young's one I've never had a problem with Young's products to be honest and um, they all seem quite good this one essentially says just sprinkle on the top of the wine um, must uh, leave for 15 minutes and then uh, stir in so that's exactly what I'm going to do uh, so I've just opened a couple of sachets this is good for about uh, 23 liters per sachet so it's probably not quite enough. I might need to go and get another uh, packet, to be honest. But uh, I'm going to sprinkle these two on now, uh, just onto the surface, and just cover it and, and leave it for 15 minutes. So we'll set the timer, come back in 15 minutes. Okay, so just whilst we're waiting for those uh, yeast cells to wake up and start bubbling away, I thought I'd just reflect on, you know, things that have been bothering me a little bit um, today after um, picking all these grapes with Sonia this morning. And that is, we haven't got a great yield really, have we? You know, 50 litres of grape must from all those um, vines that we had. I've got to keep reminding myself that uh, these are only second year vines. They're very, very young. And, uh, you know, a lot of the vines didn't have any fruit on them at all. 
at all, which is absolutely fine. Um, some had, you know, just one or two bunches and some had lots. We did find that, you know, birds had attacked quite a lot of them, which was disappointing, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to uh, make that mistake next year. It's never been a problem, birds, here before, um, but it has been this year. So they took quite a, a, quite a lot of the grapes. Um, we were also finding that because the vines are so young, um, we just didn't get that leaf wall developed enough um, to, um, you know, get loads of um, yield or loads of uh, bunches of grapes from them and I've got to you know I've got to sort of take away some positives really it's the fact that uh, we've got something uh, from them we've got about 50 liters that should uh, at least give us something to you know make some mistakes on this is going to be a mistake and a learning year uh, really so that um, next year and subsequent years we're a little bit more uh, proficient in in what we do okay so that's 15 minutes up I'm just going to check it and give it a good stir and then put it to bed for the night I'm just going to put the um, lid on um, gently, uh, not sort of fastened down at all, because if it does produce any gases, we've got to have those gases escaping somewhere. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a stir and uh, see what it's like in the morning. Okay, it's, well, it's getting very dark now, so we're going to put everything to bed now and uh, we'll see what things are like in the morning. So if you've made it this far in the video, thanks ever so much. And also a huge thank you to my Patreon members who really help this channel out with just a few dollars per month or per episode. Get a few more update videos and behind the scenes and information sheets and things like that. So maybe I'll catch you over there. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Over the next few weeks or so, we'll be progressing the wine that we've started off in this video, as well as seeing what we can get out of the other vines in the vineyard. So I hope you have a good week. I'll catch you later. Till the next video. Bye for now.